In this video, we're going to explore another way to model energy storage that's in many ways better than pie charts, especially when the system is open. This type of model is called the energy bar graph and system diagram, but many students just call it an LOL diagram for short, and when we get into it, you'll probably see why. Remember the dart shooting situation? When our system schema showed a closed system, pies worked really well for modeling energy storage because the pies were always the same size and it was easy to track how energy was changing by just looking at the changing slice sizes. Sometimes, even in an open system, pies work okay because there's either no pie or a pie. Like when we had the person outside the system and we were tracking energy without the chemical energy involved. The pies were the same size once they appeared, but there just was no pie at first in position one. In cases where the pie sizes are changing, pies are not as good because it's a little bit hard to judge the area of the pie by its diameter. It's not bad, but area and diameter are related by a square, so it's sometimes hard to get the area right if you're trying to be precise about it. In cases where both the size of the pie and the relative size of the slices are changing at the same time, pies have a real limitation because it's very hard to tell how the areas of the slices are changing if the whole entire pie is also changing size. Like in this example where the dart and earth were the system, in three, all the energy was stored as kinetic energy. In four, the pie is much larger. Some of the energy is still stored as kinetic energy, but not all of it. It's really hard to tell if the green area in four's pie is the same or greater than or less than than the green area in three's pie, and that's kind of problematic. There are a couple reasons that we need another model. First, as we discussed above, it's often hard to interpret pies when the size and the slice proportion are both changing at the same time. Second, and this may be more important, pies track energy storage well. However, they don't track energy transfer at all. This is something we haven't really talked about too much yet, but it's important. To introduce the new model, we're going to go back to the wealth analogy for a little bit. Remember that at the beginning of that story, the guy had $30,000 in savings, $5,000 in checking, $500 in cash, and his property was a $7,000 car. This bar chart is a way of representing his wealth picture. The total amount of wealth could just be the height of all these columns added together, and where the individual columns are located on the horizontal axis tells us what storage mode is being used for all of his wealth. The first change that was made in our story was when the man transferred $12,000 from his savings account to his checking account. By making a new bar graph, we can see how those changes can be represented. Savings has dropped, checking has risen, cash and property stay the same, and the total height of all the bars, if we were to add them all up, would still be the same. The next thing that happened was that he transferred money out using his Venmo to his seller, and the seller gave him a title to a car. So his checking went down, and his property went up. Unlike the previous change, this one involves someone else in the economy, not just him. It's not an internal change in his banking accounts anymore. What we're going to do here is replace the arrow with a circle that we call the system circle. Its only real purpose is to show when something goes in or out of the system, wealth in this case. So we show an arrow going out of the system that was his Venmo payment to the seller, and an arrow going into the system, which was the title transfer that gave him his new car. So Venmo and a title transfer are mechanisms of transferring wealth. They're not wealth storage modes like a savings account or a checking account. They're just ways that you move money around or move wealth around. The next thing he did was to sell his car to his sister. She paid him in cash, so his cash goes up. His property goes down because he gave her a car. Looking at the system circle, remember that he gave her a car that was worth more than she paid him because he was trying to help his sister out. So the title transfer arrow going out is a little bit longer, sorry, it's a little bit, yeah, longer than the cash coming in to his circle because she didn't give him as much as the car was worth. Also, as a result, if you were to add up the total height of all the bars after this change, you would find that they're not as 
high as the total was before the change because his entire wealth has gone down just a little bit. Finally, he received his paycheck as an ACH transfer from his employer directly into his checking account. His checking account bar goes up a little bit, and now we have a new transfer mechanism, the ACH payment, that shows how wealth gets into his system across the system boundary that's represented by that circle between the two bar graphs. Okay, now let's go back to energy. If we make another LOL chart here, you'll notice that on the horizontal axis, we don't have like cash and checking and property savings. Instead, we have our energy storage modes, kinetic energy, gravitational, elastic, chemical, and thermal. Referring to the dart launching scenario that we've been using in these videos, let's look at the transfer from position one to position two when the person is outside the system. In position one, there's no energy stored in the system because all of the energy was stored as chemical energy in the person. In position two, there is energy stored as elastic energy when the spring is compressed. Because there is energy stored in the system that was not originally stored in the system, and because we can't create or destroy energy, this energy must have come from somewhere outside the system. So we draw an arrow going into the system that crosses the system boundary, and we label it with a W. W stands for working. Working is an energy transfer mechanism that involves a change in the state of motion of an object. So that means when something speeds up or slows down, or starts moving or stops moving because of an energy transfer, that energy transfer mechanism was working. Working will never go on the L part of the LOL, like where kinetic or elastic or gravitational goes, because it's not a storage mode. It's just a way of transferring energy. By the same token, something like E-therm or E-G would never be the label on a transfer arrow, because those are storage modes, not transfer mechanisms. It's hard for students to do at first, but keep energy transfer mechanism and storage modes separate in your mind if you can. In this situation, we have a hot cup of coffee and it cools off over time. The system schema shows air and the coffee, but coffee is the system as it's defined here. At first, there's energy stored as E-therm in the coffee, but after it cools off, there's no energy stored in the coffee. Now we can't destroy energy by the first law of thermodynamics, so this energy must have left the system. So we show an arrow going out of the system, and this arrow is labeled with a Q. Q stands for heating. Heating is an energy transfer mechanism that we see when there's a temperature change. In this scenario, we have a woman sunbathing on the beach. After a while, she probably has been out too long, and she's sunburned, but she's also warmer than she used to be. The system schema shows the sun and the woman, but the woman is the system. At first, she has some energy stored as e-therm because she's a warm-blooded animal, but after laying in the sun, her e-therm is higher than it used to be. Now, because you can't create energy, this energy must have come from outside the system and crossed the system boundary. So we draw an arrow going into the circle, and we label it with R, which stands for radiation. Radiation causes temperature change like heating does, but it's temperature change that involves no contact, either direct or indirect, between the two objects. So because this woman is 93 million miles of empty space away from the sun, she's not contacting the sun in any way, yet it still warms her up. There are three really common examples of radiation energy transfer that you're going to see from time to time. One of them is this one, the sun. Microwave ovens, which also do not require contact between the two objects, even indirectly, and heat lamps, which also would work even if there was no air between the lamp and the french fries or whatever you're trying to keep warm. Standing in front of a fire is not mainly an example of radiation. Even though you are not in direct contact with the fire, you are in contact with some air, and that air is in contact with the fire, and so there's an indirect contact, so that makes it an example of heating rather than radiation. There is some radiation that goes on when you're standing in front of a fire, but you mostly see that as light. In this video, we learned about the three energy transfer mechanisms by which systems gain or lose energy. So just a reminder, they are working. That's when there's a change in the state of motion of a system. 
there's heating, that's when there's a temperature change and there's contact between the two objects, either direct or indirect. And then the last one is radiation, and that's where there's a temperature change, but there's no contact at all, either direct or indirect. We also learned about the energy bar and system graph, or the LOL chart, which is a valuable way of tracking how energy is stored and transferred during physical events.